Hello, everyone. Welcome to Divine Conversations. My name is Eric. Thank you so very much for tuning in. If you're new to the channel, welcome. It is so incredibly nice to meet you. And for all my returning peeps and OGs, what up, y'all? So, uh, due to popular demand, I am bringing back our connecting with your inner feminine or inner masculine readings. Um, a number of people asked me if I was bringing these back and I had, I was a little apprehensive at first because, well, the reason why I had stopped doing them initially was because I wanted to bring back the twin flame mirror reading and connecting with your inner masculine and inner feminine, um, that well, at least that concept for me was born of the twin flame journey, which is something that I am a part of. Um, and I thought, and I thought initially that by doing both connecting with your inner masculine and or inner feminine and the twin flame mirror reading that I would be, we'll say oversaturating the channel with these masculine feminine readings. But a number of you did ask if I was going to bring them back and I, I asked one of you and you were like, well, no, actually I do really like the twin frame flame mirror readings, but also this reading, this, this format was very helpful for her or for this person. So I, with that said, I was like, okay, you know what? Yeah, let's do it. So here we are. Um, uh, a word of advice. I do recommend that you do not watch this reading um, with intentions of connecting or figuring out, trying to understand what could be going on with either a, a divine masculine or a divine counterpart in the external, because this reading specifically is guided towards understanding what's going on within you internally, because ultimately you are not going to be able to align with a masculine or feminine counterpart in the external until you have that alignment with between both masculine and feminine within you. Now, for those of you that are fairly new to this concept, uh, I will say that everybody does have masculine and feminine energy within, okay? Even though you may be more masculine dominant or more feminine dominant in the external, it doesn't, or, or in your life, it doesn't matter because you still have the counterpart energy within you. Now, a topic or a point of confusion is this just because we'll say you are a man um, it does not mean you can't be more femininely dominant for me i am physically male but i have always been way more feminine dominant um, in my energy and i actually up until i got to sorry guys there's a police there's police or something going by and i'm just gonna have to let it <laughs> I'm so sorry, guys. Okay, let's continue. Um, I am more, I'm, I am a physically a male, but I am more feminine dominant, and I always have been. And up until I reached this twin flame journey for me specifically, it wasn't until then that I really was able to start facing what was keeping me from expressing myself more on the masculine side. And, um, healing whatever was happening within me or the, the 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 wounding i had within me the trauma i had within me in terms of my masculine energy so you could also be a woman and more masculine oriented okay so just keep that in mind and so when i'm doing this reading i'm absolutely saying him or her but i'm not speaking to gender we're speaking of energy okay um Right, 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 right. I believe that's kind of it. So I want to explain to you what the process is here. I have a number of decks that I use, that I'm using for this reading. For the feminine, and, and, and I actually, and I have a number of uh, four different topics that I want to look at while uh, during the reading, okay? So, so I'm not going to go into what those topics are because obviously you'll see that once we get into the reading here. But I do want to explain the decks that I'm using for this. So for the feminine, I'm using the Crystal Visions Tarot and the Wild Unknown Tarot. For the masculine, I'm using the Unicorn Tarot and the Epic Tarot. 
And then for both masculine and feminine, I am using the Golden Universal Tarot and the Tarot of Dreams, okay? And then to close out the reading, I am getting some Oracle guidance from the Gaia Oracle. Now, before, when I was doing this reading, I used two separate uh, Oracle decks for the masculine and the feminine. But now that we're getting back into this, I kind of wanted to integrate, have some sort of common point other than the Tarot. So I'm using the Gaia Oracle for both sides of the equation. Yes? All right. Um, so I really believe that's it. So without further ado, let's dive right in. Yeah? Thank you guys so much for tuning in. And I really hope you enjoy this. Mwah! All right, guys, welcome to getting to know your inner feminine. Yeah, so without further ado, I've got all of my decks lined up right here. So let's just get straight to it. Hi, spirit. Please make me a clear channel for the collective at this time. Please bring forward the best messages to serve the highest good of all involved. Please give us a clear and accurate representations uh, representation of anything that we would need to know right now in terms of connecting with our inner feminine energies. All right. Thank you so much, Spirit. Okay, guys. So getting straight into it, the first thing that I want to look at is the current state of your inner feminine. All right. So what are the current energies that your inner feminine is, uh, is, is dealing with? What's the current state of your inner feminine? I'm going to give this five shuffles here. One. What is the current state of your inner feminine? Two. This is three. Your inner divine feminine energies. Four. Last shuffle. Five. What is the current state of your inner feminine energy here? What do we need to know about where your inner feminine is right now? Let's see. What do we have? What do we have? Okay. Ooh, the Empress. All right. Oh, this is a lot. Okay. So I'm just going to read through it here, guys. Perfect. All right. Overall energy, we do have the Wheel of Fortune. Okay, so what this is telling me is that your inner inner, your inner feminine right now is in the process of changing, uh, coming to terms with herself, himself, however you, well, no, herself. But when I say himself, it doesn't necessarily mean that just because we're speaking of your feminine energies, I mean, we could be talking to a man here, all right? Physically, we all have inner masculine and inner feminine energy. So, okay, fine, that's out of the way. But... So your inner feminine right now is really in the process of learning about herself, understanding who she truly is at the core of her being, all right? Um, with the Ace of Wands here, the Ace of Wands has come out in reverse. I really don't think that's a bad thing because what I'm feeling like is happening here or what this is saying is that she's redefining herself, maybe in a being in the process of finding what her true passions are in relation to who she truly is, okay? The Empress does represent the, the divine feminine and the inner feminine energies. We have that with the Knight of Wands, the Page of Wands, and the Knight of Swords. Wow, that's really great. Um, so the Page of Wands is definitely an energy of self-discovery, redefining yourself. Um, also, the Page of Wands is an energy of uh, a messenger, okay? So there may be some pretty hard truths that the, that your inner feminine needs to convey, needs to express. And I'm really feeling like the, uh, in, in the process of redefining herself, expressing these truths in the physical is absolutely necessary for you. You have the Knight of Wands and the Knight of Swords. So it's as if she's going through this activation process, if this would just freaking focus. <laughs> okay. She's going through this activation process that it might feel pretty aggressive not going to lie. And it might be an inter in, in, uh, a situation in which she actually really is trying to move pretty quickly 
or is just naturally moving really quickly. Wow, wow, <laughs> these are beautiful energies, you guys. So your inner feminine is really f starting to find the victory in existence, the victory in life. And to be quite honest with you, especially if you're struggling with this, you need to understand that whatever is coming up for you in terms of your inner feminine redefining herself, it's victorious. Now, it is creating some pretty major karmic change for you, okay? Because the overall energy is the wheel of fortune. And I'm really getting that there's a lot of change here that's coming through in some pretty unexpected ways. And that might be causing a little bit of fear, a little bit of apprehension. Apprehension is more of the word that I wanna use there instead of fear, although fear might resonate with you as well. Um, but it, to be quite honest, there is really nothing to be afraid of. And you have so much fire energy here in regards to the current state of your inner feminine. And the only other energy, I mean, you have fire and major arcana, and the only other energy that you have other than that is air in the Knight of Swords. And let me tell you, what fuels fire? Oxygen. And the sword suit is, an, uh, is representative of the element of air, okay? So this Knight of Swords energy is that energy of you making changes in your life, you expressing yourself fully. The, the Divine Feminine, or just the, you will no, we'll call it that. The Divine Feminine, one of the things that she stands for wholeheartedly is truth. Well, these are, <laughs> this is a number of things, but they're all related. Truth honesty and integrity, standing up for yourself, standing up for what you believe in, not letting anyone sway you from your inner truth. And this Knight of Swords energy is really coming forward for you right now in terms of allowing you to cut yourself free of anything that stands in your way from this authentic authenticity and this integrity. And it's this Knight of Swords energy or even this air energy, this air element that is continuing to fuel the fires of self-expression here with the Empress and, and all of that stuff. This is so beautiful. Like this is such a great way to start off this energy here, okay? Now, I wanna reiterate that yes, this might be a little bit Ooh, okay, I'm gonna take those two because they literally, I tried to pick up this deck and they fell, so I'm gonna take them. But what I was saying here is this might really be, this is, this is really creating some much needed karmic change for you here, okay? Now, these next two cards, ooh, no, they're three cards. Okay, so these next three cards fell out. I, I don't, be prepared, they might be a little heavy. Oh, oh, well, damn, no. <laughs> <laughs> they're not heavy now you have now we're, we're we've got still more fire but also some earth element here you have the queen of wands the nine of wands and the knight of pentacles three knights here okay the knight of wands the knight of pentacles and the knight of swords that is really representing some serious movement i mean some serious movement the only move the only knight that we don't have here is the knight of cups and that, that very well may come out in the rest of the later on in the reading here, all right? But I mean, look at this. I mean, this is just fire out the wazoo, y'all, with the Queen of Wands now, okay? The Queen of Wands is an energy of expression, excitement, um, satisfaction, uh, uh, confidence, willpower, beauty, charisma, magnetism, being so freaking confident in yourself that absolutely nothing can stand in your way it's also an energy of receptivity i do see the queen of wands um as a representation of the law of attraction because feminine energy is receptive so if you're working from a place of femininity you are getting into alignment with that with whatever it is that you want and then allowing that allowing the universe to come to you allowing yourself to be in a receptive energy to draw that towards you via magnet magnetism okay with the nine of wands here there is an energy of perseverance not giving up not standing down there's also an energy of um, defense right defending yourself um, and that can be in some pretty in, in some ways that can be pretty extreme here this is reminding you of who you are and in, 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 in inviting you to ignite that passion within yourself and to stand your ground at all costs, not allowing anybody to tell you which way you need to go, allowing only your heart and maybe your higher self to tell you where you what you should be doing.
Stand your ground and stand it firmly. For some of you, that is a, that is a, that is a strong lesson. I'm not gonna lie. For some of you, that is a really strong lesson that you might be really struggling with right now. But the feminine is here to help you and to guide you through this, especially uh, coming through as as the empress here because the empress is is the all the all loving all nurturing queen she's the queen of all queens she's the mother of all mothers she's the mother of all things um, the mother of all existence so she's extremely nurturing she can be seen as somewhat of an enabler sometimes but that's just really just because she's loving and she just wants to give her her children or her subjects or her family or whom not whom or the people that she just wants to give what it what it, what is desired Okay, it really comes from a place of unconditional love. So if you are really struggling with this right now, understand that the feminine here is the feminine is here to support you. Okay, regardless of whatever it is that you're going through. But again, there is a lot of karmic change that is coming from this for you. Okay. That's really beautiful. That is really that is such a great way to start this reading. Okay, so the next thing I want to I want to look into in terms of your inner feminine energy is what are the current challenges that your inner feminine is facing? All right. Um, I'm going to give this five shuffles. But what I'm hearing right now is chasing. So a challenge for you right now, especially if you're in an energy of integrating and, and balancing your inner feminine energies, that was two, this is three, is the is the, the idea of not chasing or the, 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 the lesson of learning to be in this receptive energy and just allowing what it is you truly desire to gravitate towards you and not chasing after it. Because the more you chase after it, the more you're going to push it away, okay? And the feminine being a cardinal energy, and even though, yes, she represents, she's representative of receptivity, feminine energy does have a tendency to chase after things, okay? That's three. This is four. And this is five. Okay. So what is your inner feminine energy currently challenged by? What are the challenges that your inner feminine is facing right now? Yeah. them and this one too okay what are the challenges that your inner feminine are facing right now oh yeah this is a hard one wow okay we have the ten of swords at the bottom of the deck we also have the ten of wands that has come out here but we have the eight of cups the, oh no i'm sorry not the eight of cups this is the seven of cups all right the seven of cups is illusion oh the fool Oh boy. Okay. The Ten of Wands, the Wheel of Fortune again. The Eight of Pentacles, the Five of Swords with. That's right. I thought it was the Emperor. There you have it. Okay. So check it out, y'all. Some of you are dealing with a Divine Masculine counterpart. Um, I am picking up on that pretty strongly. And your challenge right here, right now, is there's some sort of confusion or illusion. There's confusion in terms of whether you should take a leap of faith and move in a new direction or not, and potentially leave the divine masculine or or a divine masculine counterpart. This is not your inner masculine. I'm I'm really picking up feeling like there is an external counterpart that you're dealing with right now, and you're challenged with not chasing him any him or her in this term i will say him or her because ultimately i am picking up on an external being that is embodying masculine energy however in this case it could be a man or a woman okay so in terms of that external being this could be a man or a woman but the challenge here is to not chase after them because that is a self sabotaging energy the more that you chase after someone else the more you inject resistance into the situation the more that they run from you and the more that you delay the healing that both of you need to go through okay you have the ten of wands with the wheel of fortune you have the ten of wands and the i'm sorry no you just have the wheel of fortune twice okay but here in this sense especially with the ten of wands and the ten of swords as the overall energy i'll get to that in a second but what this is saying here is you need to release yourself 
from the burdens. You need to release yourself from carrying all of this heavy energy. And it is only when you release this, when you stop chasing after the situation and you start to do your own work, your own healing work on your own, that's when the karma between you and this external being is really going to shift. But you have got to let go of it first. And that brings me to the Ten of Swords. In order for you guys, and, and, and it's interesting because we are talking about, you know, how to connect with your inner feminine energy. Okay, that's fine. But in doing that, you know, there are some physical circumstances that are coming to play here. So, okay, cool. We're going to talk about it because ultimately this is come on focus. Ultimately, this is um, helping your inner feminine, feminine and masculine really, really, but we're talking about the feminine here. It's helping your inner feminine grow, expand, and change in really beautiful ways. But the 10 of swords is here as the overall energy in the, the challenge for your inner feminine right now. You've got to put this to rest. You have got to end this karmic cycle. The more that you feed into these energies by trying to desperately, yes, desperately stay attached to this person and these circumstances in the physical, the more that you perpetuate this situation. So that's where the Wheel of Fortune comes back into play. You can either keep feeding into this. Are you going to focus? Are, are you? Are, are, are you going to focus? Oh, there we go. You can either keep feeding into this and keep this karmic cycle going over and over and over and over again. And even if it's not with your this masculine counterpart or just a masculine figure in the world, it gets, it's just going to keep showing up with this, with different people over and over again until you stop feeding into it. So you can either keep this wheel going by feet, continuing to feed into it, or you can change the direction of the, the way the wheel turns and remove yourself from it put it to rest, Ten of Swords, release the burden, Ten of Wands, release yourself of the confusion and the toxic and self-defeating energy, Seven of Cups, Five of Swords, and take a leap of faith and do your own inner work, which will then change the karma of the situation. Now, with this Seven of Cups and Five of Swords energy here, some of you are in this energy of, well, what happens if this person never comes back? Or what if I never realign with this person? Or what happens if this person really isn't my twin flame? Well, so what? So be it then. Ultimately, if this person doesn't come back to you, then it wasn't something that you were meant to really truly have, you know, uh, right but also you're only clearing your you're clearing the way for that right divine counterpart or that right soulmate to come into your life but you've got to release yourself of the burden first because right now this this i'm gonna say it but this shit's pretty toxic right now but really the only the most toxic thing that i'm feeling about whatever it is you're dealing with here is the fact that you just keep feeding into it i mean that's literally all it is the more you feed into it the, the, the more toxic it remains. I mean, sure, it could have toxic elements to it initially, but seriously though, by you just continuing to feed into it, you're only making it worse for yourself. Okay. Yeah, that's a har that's harder said than done, and that's a tough lesson to learn, and that's probably a pretty, pretty tough pill to swallow right now. But ultimately, whatever is happening for you is is serving your highest good. I promise you. I absolutely promise you. Okay. Oh, look, shit. There's that Knight of Swords again that just popped out. <laughs> yeah, you got to you got to cut this shit out. And if it needs to be cut out in a fairly aggressive manner, then honey, by all means, go for it. I mean, I have there really is nothing else I can say to you about that other than just then just do it. Whatever, whatever gets the job done, because at this point, it just needs to get done, okay? All right, the next thing I want to look at, what does your inner feminine want you to know right now? In terms of trying to connect with her, I'm going to give this five shuffles. What does your inner feminine want you to know right now? What does your inner feminine want to say to you right now? Ooh, believe in me. Okay. Believe in me. This is... Shoot. 
That was three. This is four. Um, the feminine energies are representative of abundance, and so does that empress energy here. That the empress represents abundance, okay? And she wants, and what she's saying right now is, I need you to believe in me. I need you to believe in the fact that just because we need to walk away from these toxic elements doesn't mean that I'm not abundant enough to bring forward what is truly meant for us or meant for me. So I really need you to believe in me right now. Yeah, I may be telling you to let go of this toxic situation, but I'm telling you to let go of this toxic situation so that we can have the space for abundance to fill in what it is we are releasing from our lives right now. Oof, last shuffle. Okay, so other than that, what else does the fem inner feminine want you to know right now? Mmm, I believe that was the Six of Pentacles. Oh, damn. <laughs> damn. There it is right there. The Eight of Cups with the Page of Cups. Okay, ooh, and the King of Wands. All right, for some of you, I just heard he is a narcissist, and you have got to let him go. But you see... But you see, you have the counterpart to the Queen of Wands that came out in the beginning. So what the feminine wants you, what your inner feminine wants you to know right now is you are, in fact, in the process of manifesting the king, the king to your queen. But you have got to step into this queen energy first and deny access to anything and anyone that does not provide you with reciprocity. Six of Pentacles in reverse, okay? You also have the Page of Cups, which is definitely talking about new love here. Well, there you go. There you have it. There's the Two of Cups. The Eight of Cups. She wants you to walk away from things that are not balanced and reciprocal, which means that she's also asking you to, to, to learn and recognize and own your worth. Mm-hmm. Finally, oh, the Seven of Swords in reverse. And what she's saying with this seven of swords in reverse is like, look, do not allow anyone access to you to deceive you. It is time for you to let this go. It is time for you to stop giving away your power to those that would only usurp it. Stop giving your power to those that would only funnel it and not give you anything back in return. If you want this king to your queen, then you need to be confident enough to walk away from anything that does not serve what the queen truly deserves. Only then, says the inner feminine, will you find that new love. And all, also what she's saying here is you are, in you walking away from that which doesn't serve you, you have the opportunity to find this new love, to find this balance between masculine and feminine within. And that is what is required first and foremost before you can ever have any representation of that in the physical. Why? Because your external reality is a direct reflection of your internal reality. And so what you have going on in your internal right reality right now is only helping to bring you this, this fuckery, this tomfoolery, this bullshit, right? So if you want to change that, then you have got to do what, ladies and gentlemen? Walk away from it. Okay? Beautiful. Oh my God, this is so great. Oh my God, this is so great. <laughs> okay, cool. So now finally, in terms of the tarot here, I wanna look at action steps that you can take other than walking away because, okay, we already have that message, but what other action steps can you take to further connect with your inner feminine energies? Five shuffles here. Let's. Let's get it, y'all. Let's get it. And this is a little bit of a bigger deck. Ooh, okay. One. What action steps can you take to further connect with your inner feminine? Two. Three. Four. Inner feminine. What action steps can you take to further connect with your inner feminine? And five. Here we go.
We're going to leave it right there. Overall energy is the Queen of Cups. So first and foremost, what she really wants you to know is she really wants you to get get connected to your inner sense of compassion. I mean, yeah, there are a lot of you out there that already have this sense of compassion for others. And that may be an energy that is keeping you from walking away from toxic situations because you have that nurturing, loving, almost motherly energy that you just wanna, you just wanna help, you wanna, you wanna heal and all that. But you have to start turning that energy in towards yourself first. Also, you need to learn boundaries because the Queen of Cups, when she is negatively aspected, homegirl ain't got, it, it, Homegirl's got shit for boundaries. Like, ain't got no boundaries whatsoever. She'll just let anybody come in and out of her energy and her body and take that as it resonates. You know what I mean by some of that, okay? Um, Willy-nilly, without any regard to how, it re how it's really affecting her, you really need to learn some boundaries. Many of you do, or some of you need to learn some boundaries. And you know who else says that? The Queen of Swords. Stop, and I literally just heard, stop letting toxic, narcissistic individuals take advantage of you. This Queen of Swords ain't having none of that shit. Oh no, off with their heads. Heads will roll, my dear. All right? You have the Six of Wands and the Four of Pentacles. Your victory comes in letting go. Your future, I just heard, your future depends on letting go of things that you've been holding on to for dear life for way too damn long. The only way you are going to be victorious is if you start cutting out the toxicity and cutting away any of the things that you've been holding on to. Okay, I heard specifically toxic codependency. I mean, codependency is pretty toxic all around. But here, in this case, this the, there is a strong sense of codependency that has become very, very toxic in your life. You have got to take the energy, advice, and the, 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 uh, what is it? What's the word I'm looking for? The the method, I guess, of the Queen of Swords and literally just start chopping heads. I mean, okay, I don't mean, okay, I don't mean like literally t chopping someone's heads off, but you you get it. Like like no like there is absolutely no room for discussion. If it's toxic, you need to cut it out and you need to save yourself from it. Ain't nobody else going to do it for you. And that's where the Queen of Cups, the compassion of the Queen of Cups comes in. Instead of giving all of this compassion and love and care to others that, quite frankly, don't necessarily deserve it, you have got to instead turn that energy back towards yourself and do whatever it is you need to do. However drastic it may be, do whatever it is you need to do to save yourself because you are your only savior here. Ain't nobody else going to save you if you're not willing to save yourself first. And you are not going to attract that king of wands to your queen of wands unless you can stand in front of the king of wands and say, I don't need you. Who the hell do you think you are? I am whole and complete in and of myself. You want to get to me? Show me that you're worthy. Because I know exactly what I'm worthy of. And the Queen of Wands is fiery enough to say some shit like that to him and not give a damn. <laughs> you know what I mean? And I'll, I'll tell you what, I'll tell you what, ain't nothing else that's going to turn him on like that, okay? You want to know why? Because he's the counterpart. He's just as fiery as she is. That shit turns him on rock hard, man, <laughs> okay? Like... Don't, so don't be afraid to put that forward. And I'm not, and, and please, please, please understand that I am not encouraging anyone, spirit for that matter, is not encouraging anyone to be that fiery energy just to manipulate someone, just to get someone to want them. No, you be that fiery energy because that is who you are and that is what you stand for and that is what you deserve to be. You be that fire, fiery energy for no one else but your own damn self right? That's what we're talking about here. Well, that sure was exciting. <laughs> All right, y'all. So now let's close out the reading here with your oracle guidance. Let's get some oracle here for you. Two more shuffles here. Here we go. 
for your inner feminine. Oracle guidance, please, here. Connecting with your inner feminine energies. Oracle guidance, please, spirit. For connecting with our inner... Take this... Oh, no, you know what? You know what? No, no, no. I'm going to let it fall out. Please and thank you. Connecting with your inner feminine energy. There it is, right there. Ooh! Okay. Card number 45, which boils down to a nine, y'all. But this says evolution, earth changes, climate change, transformation. I mean, beautiful. This is absolutely perfect because this is definitely what we're talking about here. Transformation, y'all. Okay. There we go. Evolution. Focus. There we go. Our world is cradled in a cosmic ocean of love, surrounded by an infinite universe, governed by a higher force greater than our human mind can know or comprehend. We are a forever changing image, forever transforming on our journey through eternity. Yes, the climate is changing, and yes, the earth is transforming. But this has always been so, and this will always continue. Are we grounded? I'm sorry, are we governed by our by a will greater than our own, or are we the architects of our own future? This we do not know for sure, but one thing is certain, whether we like it or not, our precious planet will continue continue to transform. Be mindful of Mother Earth, be considerate and kind to her, but do not fear her changing nature, for just like us, she is transforming to ever greater light. And you know, this really does resonate with the changing element or the evolution of your own inner feminine. Feminine energy is really kind of representative of cardinal energy, and cardinal energy is the trailblazer. So the feminine is constantly changing, whereas the max masculine is a fixed energy. The masculine stays steady while the feminine changes, right? And of course, they complement each other. So don't be afraid of the change that's coming here. Your affirmation is... All lovingly unfolds through time and space. Life constantly transforms, but in essence, nothing changes. There is nothing to fear. There is only love. I am one with the universe and stars. Love is my guiding force. I'm going to read that one more time. Your affirmation is, all lovingly unfolds through time and space. Life constantly transforms, but in essence, nothing changes. There is nothing to fear. There is only love. I am one with the universe and stars. Love is my guiding force. There you have it, kids. Thank you so much for tuning in. I hope that was helpful for you. Uh, I hope you have a fantastic day, and I look forward to connecting with you again for our next reading very soon. Yeah? Take care. Mwah. Bye.